I don't think you guys realize what a wild week we have just had. A man is seven days away from becoming the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. What we are now finding out about the bridge collapse in Baltimore is wild. The mystery behind all of those women just randomly being punched in the face might be over. The FBI are now expanding their investigation into Diddy. And Alex, the editor and new father, is back. So be prepared to watch the best video probably of your life. All of that and more. So let's get cracking. It's good to be back, and I will address last week's video with the uh, editing and shit, but I will do that at the end because let's move on quickly. How about we kick this episode off with some idiots? Because what you are seeing is footage posted online of a huge crowd all shining powerful laser pointers at a plane flying over a festival in Mexico. I mean, come on. If flights in 2024 didn't have enough problems, I don't think we need this. Now, if you didn't know, somehow, shining a laser pointer at a plane is highly illegal, and even just one laser is enough to temporarily blind a pilot, let alone hundreds like this. I mean, people who have been caught doing this in the past have been hit with hefty fines and have even been tracked down by the FBI. Oh. So don't get any ideas. Luckily, there were no issues and the plane landed safely. No thanks to these people. Onwards! Also this week, a town in Thailand is being overrun by a massive monkey gang and police are now fighting back. We got a freaking monkey war before G Now Lopburi has been dealing with huge amounts of monkeys since about the pandemic. They've been stealing food from people and shops, vandalizing property, and of course, damaging vehicles. But it has got so bad recently that the police general has now ordered a special unit specifically, their job role, only job role, is to combat the monkeys. <laughs> and yes, somehow this is a real police vest that this unit is wearing. Oh, what the fuck? Don't, don't put that in. Not the fuck part. And honestly, this war is not a joke. It's starting to get tactical because the monkeys have now started learning which officers are armed and which are not. So police have had to adapt by hiding their faces and their tranquilizers. <laughs> this part is crazy. Police have even apparently gone on a mission to capture the monkey gang leader named Ai Krau, who has a reputation for being infamously aggressive. <laughs> As of right now, the war still rages on, so I guess I'll keep you updated. Moving on. <laughs> okay, I have to warn you for this next one. If you don't want a new fear unlocked in your life, shut your eyeballs now because you may never be able to swim in peace again. This week, an eight-year-old girl died in a Hilton hotel after she was sucked into this pipe while swimming in the pool. Reports say that the girl went missing around 6 p.m. and when search rescue teams arrived, they began searching outside and in various different rooms. But after they started reviewing security footage, they discovered that she had disappeared underwater. They then decided to drain the pool and a small remote camera was attached to a pole and sent nearly 20 feet inside the pipe before they made the gruesome discovery. But because because she was so deep inside, the effort to retrieve her body took a staggering 13 hours. And what's crazy is that this pipe is only about one foot in diameter. So I mean, you can only imagine the force that it took to suck a person inside and 20 feet back. Now, how this seems to have happened is that this pool is actually a lazy river. So this pipe that Alex is highlighting now for you is supposed to be pushing water out to create that current. But the head of the rescue team said that right beside that pipe that she got sucked into, there there's another pipe with a grate on it. That's the one that's supposed to be sucking water in, hence the grate. But if the pump was wired wrong during the recent maintenance, the two pipes could have swapped roles. The girl's parents are now suing Hilton for $1 million. <sighs> and I'm not gonna lie, when I first read uh, $1 million, I thought, damn, you, you could have gone higher than that. Anyway, Let's move on. Now, you've probably seen by now, but this week, women all over New York were being randomly punched in the face by complete strangers while they were walking down the street, minding their own goddamn business. And when more and more girls started posting with very similar accounts, 
It started freaking people out. In just 24 hours, eight women, all with similar stories, posted on TikTok saying that they were minding their own business, as I just mentioned, walking down the street in broad daylight when a man sucker punched them in the face. Then this is when Alex plays all of the videos. A man came up and punched me in the face. Oh, I just got punched in the face. I was assaulted in New York City. He hit me square in the arm because I think he was trying to hit me in the face. I, I have fallen victim. I was punched in the head. I literally just got punched by some man on the sidewalk. And what's crazy is that after they posted, they said that a load of people reached out to them saying the exact same thing happened to them too. They just never spoke about it publicly. Which I mean begs the question, how many women are being punched in the face in New York? Very strange. This obviously sent the internet into a frenzy speculating around the mystery of who the hell's doing this? Is it one person? Many people? But then on Wednesday, we had at least some of our questions answered. Sorry, that was just you, actually. Alex? Oh, yes, you said that you would, you would like to sleep in. <laughs> they tweeted saying that they arrested a man in connection with these random assaults on women. But then this is where things get weird because the man that they arrested is a failed politician named Skibuki Stora. Bro, what? It's me, Skibuki, what? Marcus Covey, great-great-grandson, what? Now, he was charged with assault on just one of the girls, Haley, but the NYPD said that he has been arrested three times in the past six months, all for similar incidences, and he has an extensive criminal record. I mean, why the hell is he being let back on the streets then? And it gets crazier because the entire time, this man is being pretty much snitching on himself. Because if you go into just some of his about 10 TikTok accounts, which I think by the time of recording this video, they've all been taken down, you'll find that not only did he unsuccessfully run for mayor of New York, governor, and city council, but he has countless videos of him walking around and harassing women on the street. Sometimes he'll approach women and say, slow down, what are you in a rush for? Slow down. Me. Other times he'll comment on what they're wearing and how their hair is styled and sometimes he'll just record them without saying a word. Oh, and sometimes he'll just punch them in the face, but <laughs> I don't think he records that part. Now as for why he's attacking random people, your guess is probably as good as mine. Mental illness, breathing, whatever the hell's in the New York air, or maybe his victims were Democrat voters. And I say this because in a bunch of his videos, he makes it very clear to all of the strangers that he approaches and harasses that he hates Democrats. Fuck the Democrats! The devil is their daddy! I'm great, I'm Marcus Garvey, great, great, great someone! I'm Skaboke! I'm running for city council! Yeah, you're a Democrat, you try to push me walking down the street. Like you're white, I think you're special! I'm Marcus Garvey's grandson, yo. Walk down 14th Street, Union Square, anywhere in 14th Street, and I promise you that these people gonna bump you, bump you through. If you're looking for a fight, that's the perfect location. These people. They, they, they want sauce. Now, fortunately for the people of New York, it seems that the third time is the charm because it's being reported that he is finally being booked into a jail and is scheduled to appear before a judge on April the 3rd. Moving, moving the fuck on. <laughs> Thought it'd be a relevant transition. Don't know if Alex made that look cool or not, uh, but moving on. Prime break. Mm. And also, by the way, uh, I'm a, let me just address what an effort I made for you guys today. I even put on pants, which is actually quite rare because sometimes I'm recording in here and you don't even know in some, some real dodgy shit. <laughs> and I just had a fresh trim. Fresh trim just for you guys. It couldn't, couldn't look like shit after last, last week's video. I've got some making up to do. Anyway, let's jump into some of the heavy hitters for this week. Because if World War Three kicks off, it's a really bad time if it happens now, because we are now learning that four military ships which are on call for US military operations are stranded inside the Baltimore Harbor. And two of them are not only the most capable military cargo ships in the US inventory, but are also some of the fastest cargo vessels of their general size anywhere in the world. So uh, maybe we just chill out until we get that situation cleared up, please, politicians. We also found out just in the last couple of days that all of the crew on the Dali, which is still pinned down by the bridge, are still on board. The crew consists of 21 sailors, 20 of which... <coughs> God damn. What happened there? 20 of whom are from India and they are all said to be in good shape and good health, unlike me for some reason. Now authorities say that they have no idea when they are getting them off the vessel, but unless safety concerns change, the crew will most likely disembark when the boat is moved or taken out of the water. 
So they could be waiting there a while. We also now know that there are about 764 tons of hazardous materials, and they may or may not be leaking. And they also may or may not be the source of the sheen that you can see on the surface of the water near the crash site. But what we do know is that 14 of the 56 containers of hazardous material are damaged, so... Make up your own mind on that one. And if you were curious on how the hell long is this going to take to clear it up, well, a professor of civil engineering at John Hopkins University said that we're looking at weeks or months but not a year. Now, this is not good news at all, because this bridge was not only a critical link for trucks and vehicles connecting Washington, Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York, but it was also the busiest in the US for car shipments, handling more than 750,000 vehicles in 2023, and it is one of the busiest ports on the US's eastern seaboard for cargo ships. And all of that, at least for now, is ground to a halt. But let's move on. <laughs> okay. Now let's discuss one of the juiciest pieces of what the fuck that happened this week. Because the internet is now comparing P. Diddy to Jeffrey Epstein. And honestly, if you hear just some of the allegations made in the lawsuits that are against him right now, and how many celebrities are potentially implicated, you'd quickly realize that Netflix is about to have a season two banger. So let me break this down for you real good. Shit really started kicking off in the past five months. Because just in that time, four women have filed lawsuits against Diddy accusing him of sexual assault, including his longtime girlfriend, singer Cassie. Context, they were on and off for about 10 years. But also in the last month, a $30 million lawsuit was filed by music producer Rodney Jones, aka Lil Rod, I think, accusing Diddy, and this is where shit gets crazy, of being a criminal enterprise that could qualify as a widespread and dangerous criminal sex trafficking organization. And you know shit's real when they hit you with, you're an organization for this shit. Following that, several people, including Cassie, came forward with information that allowed agents to establish a probable cause, allowing a judge to grant a search warrant. And you know they're not granting shit for no reason. Now concerned that Diddy may potentially destroy evidence, three of his homes were quickly raided at the same time, two of his sons were briefly detained, and a number of electronics like hard drives, cell phones, and laptops all were seized. And then after all of this went down, we found out today that this investigation is expanding. Not only did we see that the HSI was involved in the raids, which if anyone doesn't know, they specialize in transactional crime, including human trafficking and smuggling, according to their official website. But prosecutors are now also dishing out subpoenas left, right, and center to cell phone companies, computer companies, Diddy's charter jets, music artists, major label records, CEOs and executives, commercial airline companies, which would force any of these entities or people issued with one of these subpoenas to produce documents, information, or testimonies as part of this case. So his inner circle is being squeezed hard right now. Now, Diddy disappeared for days after his homes were raided, but he was finally just spotted today, and bro was playing top golf with his daughters. Now, I very much doubt that that was actually a coincidence. You know, his PR team is probably working overtime right now to make him look like he's innocent. He's not bothered. All of this, I'm so chill. I can play golf while this is all happening because I'm so innocent. But while Diddy was disappeared, the internet was hella busy. Everyone started dragging up old videos of what celebrities have accused Diddy of doing in the past. So let me just spitball some of these for you. Usher said that when he was 13, he lived with him for a year, and in that time, he witnessed what he described as some curious things. And when he was asked if he would send his own child to live with Diddy, he emphatically responded, Hell no. In multiple old videos, Kanye claims that to stay out of jail for the crimes they committed, rappers like Diddy and Meek Mill made deals with federal agents to collect blackmail on other celebrities, politicians, athletes, British royalty, and all of the freakout parties that he hosted at his mansions. And to be fair, what Kanye said kind of links up with what Rodney Jones said in his lawsuit. He claimed that Diddy has hundreds of hidden cameras in every room and that his business is centered around sexual blackmail. Sounds, uh, sounds kind of familiar. The lawsuit also claims that Diddy possesses compromising footage of every person that attended his freak-off parties. And that is a freaking long list. Now, I don't know about every single person going to his parties being guilty of something. I'd take that with a grain of salt uh, because, you know, people like Prince Harry went there. I'm not saying that. I don't, just, 
They're probably not, yeah, not every single person. The complaint argues that up and coming talent were promised opportunities and access to music executives, but when they went, they were supplied with drugs, alcohol, and potentially underage women and prostitutes, and they were filmed and some of them were blackmailed. The lawsuits also claim that these parties were actually funded by really high up music executives like the Universal CEO, Lucian Grange. And honestly, the more that you read of this lawsuit, the layers just keep on going deeper and deeper and deeper. So I'll spare you the extra layers. <laughs> to be fair, those extra layers could be seen soon because 50 Cent, who has been a long time critic of Diddy, posted on X saying that he will fund a docu-series on all of the allegations against him. Netflix, you got competition. <laughs> now, honestly, if Homeland Security actually did find any of this alleged footage, not only would Diddy be going to prison for a very long time, but this would blow the whole Jeffrey Epstein thing out of the water. And it begs the question, how many people would Diddy be dragging down with him? That's all, of course, if he is actually guilty and he has done any of this stuff, because right now, innocent until proven guilty. He is an innocent man. And the moral of the story is, don't go to any celebrity parties. Onward to our last story. Now I wanted to end today's video with a positive one because honestly, way more people need to know about this story. This man is about to become the first person ever to run with his two legs the entire length of Africa. And after running every single day for the last 342, my man has only got seven left to go. Russ Cook from the UK started his 9,000 mile trip from the tip of South Africa and will finish at the edge of Tunisia. And honestly, Russ gives Dave Goggins a bloody run for his money for hardest man alive. Because not only has he decided to run roughly two marathons a day through some of the hottest countries on the planet, while being ginger, but on his travels, he's been kidnapped and driven seven kilometers into the jungle, and he was very lucky to make it out alive. He and his video team were robbed at gunpoint. He's had to wade through rivers, hike over mountains, run at night through the Sahara. He's got caught in multiple sandstorms. And even when he was peeing blood, he continued running. When he had food poisoning, he continued running. When he had the shits and needed to vomit, he stopped did his thing, and then continued running. I mean, the only thing that almost stopped this man was when he couldn't get his visa to run through Algeria. But he turned to his followers for help. They gathered together and managed to get the attention of the Algerian embassy in the United Kingdom, who then personally reached out to him on X and granted him a courtesy visa on the spot. I mean, even Elon Musk got involved in this. So far, he's raised over 350,000 pounds for charity, and he has a massive party planned when he finally reaches the finish line. And if it's taken you 342 days to find out that there is a man running the entire length of Africa, you now only have seven days left to watch history be made. And with that story of sheer human brilliance, I bid thee farewell. Actually, no, because um, I said I would talk about what happened last week. Because I like to clear the air. Actually, I genuinely don't know what happened to the end of that video. Asking their viewers, which of course are children, right on the bottom of your foot, take a picture and post it online with the hashtag Sam and Cat Saturday. Uh, who approved? I actually edited the entire thing pretty well. And I'm telling you, there was about three minutes left of footage when I downloaded the video. And somehow, for some weird reason, when I uploaded it to YouTube, it just cut three minutes off the fucking video. So I posted this video like, God damn it, I freaking did made this whole video brilliantly. I can't wait for people to watch it. And then the comments started flooding in. You know what, actually, I'm just gonna start calling some people out because some of these comments, disgusting and disgraceful. I cut a movie premiere one day early to get back to edit this video. And this is the shit that I receive. Top comment with 127 of you liking it. Bro didn't even get to finish his sentence before the video ended. Skull emoji. Leave it to News Daddy to traumatize us all. That was not my intention. News Daddy editing showing at the end. Not my fault, YouTube's fault. The ending, skull emoji. <laughs> what? Him thinking to himself, I can't remember how he does the end, so I'll just leave it like this. No one will notice. <laughs> that was funny, but fuck.
the pink line. That was actually edit. That's a whole series of very unfortunate events. Hey, if anyone talks about the pink line, that was Alex's fault because I couldn't change it. He's the one that left it in the middle. We need Alex back. What is this editing? <laughs> Alex, come back. This is so ass. How dare you? Editing fail. The editing was trash. What bad editing? Wow. You know what? That's it. Well, now you got Alex back. Are you happy? Did you enjoy the video that you just watched? I bet his editing was extra. I bet he put extra effort into this video because he thought, you know, let's really give the people a show and say I'm back, guys. Fucking hate you, Alex, but I also love you because I bet it was a good video too. Now with that, I bid thee there. <laughs> Can't even... Okay, yeah, edit, edit, brr, edit that, Alex. Can you make me speak better too, huh? I bet you can't do that. So, yeah, he's not a miracle worker, guys. He's just a regular father. But I do want to say congratulations to Alex. Uh, I love the fact that you're now a father editing my videos. It just gives this whole thing a more mature vibe, you know? Thank you all for still watching last week's video. It meant a lot to me and I love you. I will see you in the next one. But until then, bow, bow, ha, 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 ha.